Get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. Get ready, get ready for a tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. Spilling all this hot tea on this podcast street. So get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. From tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. Hey, tea sippers. Happy New Year. I hope everybody's doing good today. I have been busy working on my deep dive. So I've taken some, you know, a few days off of the internet just because it was a lot of work. But I am back today with the Tea Time Unfiltered podcast. I hope you guys are doing good. So I want to come on here and talk about some things that are going on in the medical industry. And um, it's really disturbing me because there's a new viral story that came out about a doctor basically trying to kill his entire family. But before we even go there, if you guys don't know, this summer in the state of Minnesota, we were dealing with the great doctor resignation, where a lot of medical doctors and nurses were resigning. Um, There was even a big strike here where a lot of nurses, you know, were going on strike just because of just everything they had been going through from the pandemic and then, you know, the same nurses that were held heroes in 2020 were then all, well, the same medical, I should say, the same medical people, nurses, doctors, techs, stuff like that, that were held heroes in 2020 were then turned around and demonized in 2021 for simply trying to make a a choice on what they wanted to inject or not inject in their bodies. And a lot of nurses got laid off, doctors too, And so it just made the whole medical establishment a mess. Tonight, thousands of Minnesota nurses are back on the picket line. This is day two of a three day statewide strike. Nurses like Angela Bichetti say they are fed up and underpaid. We need to have say. We are tired of our hospital saying we don't have enough. There's nothing I can do. That costs too much. But in the end, our patients are suffering. In Minnesota, nurses from 15 different hospitals are asking for a 30% wage increase over the next three years. Before negotiations fell apart, those hospitals offered a 10 to 12% increase. We've indicated a willingness to negotiate reasonable amounts above that. But right now, the nurses position is just unrealistic and unaffordable. But many nurses say they're at a breaking point. There was a nationwide nursing shortage before COVID-19. The pandemic made it worse. As hospitals across the country were pushed to the brink, life as a nurse became more complicated and more demanding, leading to a mass exodus. There are 37,000 fewer healthcare workers today than there were in February 2020, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, meaning travel nurses became increasingly vital. And that's part of the frustration. These nurses say hospitals are willing to spend a lot of money to hire travel nurses, but unwilling to offer similar salaries to their full-time workers. We didn't want to come out here. You know, we gave them that 10-day legal notice. But in the end, they could have avoided all of this. They're offering nine to $13,000 for those travel nurses. They could have put a fraction of that into the nurses behind me and our patients. We wouldn't be here today. So, like I said, we had to deal here in our state with the great resignation. And it's starting to happen more and more around the country where they are losing a lot of people in the medical field. And so what they're saying right now, there's such a shortage of doctors in the United States. They're saying that there's such a shortage in the United States of, you know, let's just say doctors. They're saying that in this country, within the next 12 years, we're looking at having only roughly between 37,000 to 124,000 physicians. Think about that. That is in all 50 states. That is frightening. And you have, you know, the, the next generation, um, and I'm not saying all, of course, we have some people, you know, in the younger generations who do want to be doctors and they do want to be nurses, but a majority of young people are not looking into these careers anymore. You know, they're more looking at social media careers and influencers and stuff like that. And especially when you can see that a lot of influencers 
honestly make more than some doctors. And, you know, growing up, the, being a doctor, that was like the ultimate status symbol. You made good money. You were highly respected. So now everything has flipped where, you know, the most respected jobs or the coolest jobs are influencers. So that's also taken a toll on the medical establishment as well. As the pandemic transitions to what officials see as an endemic, some of the damage done over the past 24 months will take years to undo. The healthcare system is still reeling from the strain of COVID as thousands of nurses left the profession. CBS 2's Jessica Moore looks into the dire shortage and what can be done to bridge the gap between the resources and the need. Fire it up and take no more. Nurses at Mamadi's Hospital in the Bronx protest what they're calling unsafe staffing shortages. Recently, I worked in situations where there was only two RNs on the floor. Two RNs for a unit that used to have five RNs. We need more help. This is not safe for us. This is not safe for the patients. Since the start of the pandemic, nearly 400,000 healthcare workers have either quit, retired, or died of COVID, leaving a gaping hole in one of the most crucial hospital positions, nurses. Travel nurse Gilbert Banda spent months at hospitals across New York City at the height of the pandemic. It was a lot of um, death. I've been a nurse for 16 years and I've never had to bag bodies after bodies. People Pediatric dying, ICU you know, nurse Cheryl Leo says her work is her passion, but it's not for the faint of heart. Standing there holding a patient's hand so they wouldn't be alone when they died. Um, and it stays with you. Last month, hospitals in 18 states reported critical staffing levels, including New York and New Jersey. Many nurses say they're burned out, underpaid, and overworked. Maybe I'm only supposed to have one or two patients, but then I have three, and there are three sick patients, and I just don't feel like I can give, you know, 100% like I want to give. It makes you feel defeated. Hospitals typically staff 60 to 70 percent of nurses and bring in travel nurses to bridge the gap as needed. During the pandemic, those numbers skyrocketed. One travel nurse agency says Bronx hospitals employed 39 percent travel nurses in 2020 and 74 percent in 2021. Experts say it's a pipeline problem. An entire generation of baby boomer nurses with great experience are retiring at the same time that those nursing schools don't have enough teachers because of that same population retiring. To make matters worse, the Bureau of Labor Statistics says 70 percent more nurses are needed every year to fill the chronic shortage, but only 4 percent of students are studying to become nurses. It's more critical than ever for us right now to be encouraging young people, high school kids, college kids, to consider a, a, a health care profession. Nurses switching careers tend to seek out jobs that bring less stress and more money. Just the value of what you do, you should be compensated for it. If the pandemic has taught us anything about the healthcare profession, it's the value of those who care for us when we need it most. Jessica Moore, CBS2 News. So I want to go ahead and read to you guys the seven reasons why doctors are leaving medicine. And even on YouTube, there's many doctors who are making YouTube videos you know, talking about why they're planning on leaving or why they're dealing with burnout. So it's really sad. So they're saying here that there's been an increase of unhappy doctors leaving the practice. They're saying one of the top reasons is burnout. Female doctors report significantly higher rates of burnout than their male counterparts. Emergency medicine and critical care are amongst the top burnout specialists. About 4% of doctors say that they quit their practice due to burnout 1% have attempted suicide and 13% have felt suicidal. Number two reason is increased verbal abuse and bullying by their own patients. Um, there's some doctors are not reporting that they're being cyberbullied, they're being harassed, they're being threatened, um, they're being attacked on their social media pages, their place of businesses are being contacted. So it's causing a lot of issues and you have a lot of patients who are taking their frustration or their abuse out on their doctors, and that's also causing a lot of conflict for doctors as well. You know, they call you an asshole. Been called a bitch a thousand times. A con, a knocked up whore. Get the F out of his effing room, you effing N-word. I've been bitten, choked, punched in the mouth. I had a guy try to kick me in my stomach while I was pregnant. That poor nurse at your bedside has probably been through hell with the last 10 or 15 hours, and then you come in demanding ESPN? Are you kidding me? And it's like, well, yeah, I got punched in the head tonight. And any other job would be like, what are you talking about? 
Um, number three is insufficient income. Now, remember back in the day, like I said, being a doctor was a very lucrative job. You know, you went to school for eight years and you were blessed with this huge amount of income. But now they're saying that ever since the pandemic, that they're not making as much because the cost of supplies and things like that are a lot higher. A lot of doctors are saying that they're struggling to pay their student loan debt. Um, others are saying that their malpractice premiums have gone up from 100000 to $200,000 annually. So when you have to pay more in malpractice, premiums and insurance that can, you know, cut a dent in your salary as well. Number four, lack of hours and family time. The average doctor works 53.4 hours per week and may have a 24 seven or weekend on call period. So that's also causing burnout that a lot of doctors and this, like I said, goes for people in medical um, period, you know, nurses to techs, all that stuff. They're having to work so many hours that there's no work life balance. And that can take a toll on anybody and sometimes you know we have this thing in our mind where we think that doctors and nurses are invincible and they're not supposed to be able to feel anything and they're just supposed to work like machines but at the end of the day they're human beings in the same way you get burnt out at your customer service job or your fast food job or hell I get burnt out here you know doing YouTube you know everybody gets mentally burnt out from their job I can only imagine what doctors go through because on top of them being burnt out they also have to deal with you know diagnosing of illnesses like cancer you know imagine having to tell somebody that they only have six months to live um, building bonds with patients only for them to die or if you work in the ER, you're constantly dealing, you know, with some type of death one way or another. So I can only imagine the burnout that they deal with. So now with all of that being stated with, you know, medical professionals, doctors and nurses going through burnout and going through a lot of things at their job. Um, this story came out today and it is viral all over the internet. It's about a Pasadena doctor. And I'm really wondering if we're going to start seeing more and more stories like this. This is incredibly frightening. This man literally tried to kill not only himself, but his two young children and his wife. There's no excuse for this type of behavior, but I'm wondering if there's something going on in the medical field that may be driving people to psychosis at this point. Because to drive your children and your wife off of a cliff is insane to me. Well, he has been arrested for intentionally driving his Tesla off of a cliff called Devil Slide. Now, Devil Slide is a very, very scary cliff. It's in Northern California. And a lot of people have committed suicide by taking a plunge of 250 feet off of this slide. And most people do not survive. Once you go over that cliff, it's bye-bye. Well, I don't know if it was the Tesla, honey. Maybe it was the grace of God. But all four of them survived. The babies survived, he survived, the wife survived, and they were all conscious when the emergency crews got to them. So this entire situation is crazy. His name is Darmash Patel, and right now he's been booked into the San Mateo County Jail um, once he was released from the hospital. So this whole situation is insane. Um, his daughter was seven years old and he had a four-year-old son and his wife's name was Niha. They all survived their car tumbling down Devil Slide. New this morning, a Pasadena doctor has been charged with attempted murder and child abuse after police say he drove his family, drove his family intentionally off of a 250-foot clip. Imagine that. The pictures of this white Tesla crushed at the bottom of Devil's Slide in Northern California are shocking enough, as is the word the family of four somehow survived this crash. Alex Capriello is live with his details, and Alex, this is just shocking. Mitch, good morning to you. Yeah, rescue officials are saying that this is an absolute miracle that all four of these people were able to survive this really dramatic wreck more than 250 feet down a California cliff. The four people inside that Tesla, a 42-year-old man, a 41-year-old woman, as well as a seven-year-old little girl and a four-year-old little boy, all four of them said to be alert and alive when they were transported to the hospital. Now we have some dramatic video from that rescue that we want to show you folks at home. Take a look here. You can see it's from inside one of the helicopters as multiple agencies work to free the victims trapped inside. First responders used the jaws of life to pry open the car doors, which were jammed shut from the multiple barrel rolls it did down the side of the cliff. 
They then utilized a rope and pulley system to hoist those children and adults back to safety. Crews battled harsh conditions the entire time, like constant rain, heavy wind, and crashing waves to get the four of them out into safety. And Alex, I know this is not an ad for Tesla's safety rating, but you got to guess it might make its way into one. But can you tell us specifically about this section of the road? Is this known to be dangerous? Yeah, this is a part of Northern California called Devil's Slide. It's about 15 miles south of San Francisco, and it's on the Pacific Coast Highway. And here's what you need to know about PCH. Number one, that it runs almost the entirety of California. But then number two, it is really windy, and it has these dramatic views of the ocean from below, uh, often traveling through cliff sides. At this part of Devil's Slide, it is known for wrecks, but very rarely do you see any survivors come out of it alive. And this section where this Tesla was said to drop off uh, was said to have no guardrail, Mitch. And do we know any more about the people inside? You mentioned their ages, but what more do we know about the uh, uh, miraculous survivors of this crash? Yeah, News Nation was able to identify the driver. That's 42-year-old Dharmesh Patel. He's actually a doctor down here in Southern California in the San Fernando Valley. The hospital has identified the other people inside that car as his family. Now, as for the evidence, police say that they have enough to suspect that he intentionally drove this vehicle over the side of the cliff. And that's why the preliminary charges right now are attempted murder as well as child abuse. He will be booked in jail once he's released from the hospital. My, my goodness, you know he has to be treated before he can be released, but my goodness, I, I just... Wow. Thank you, Alex, for that report, Adrian. I just, I don't know, as a, as a, a father of a young child, I have no idea what would drive you to say, I'm going to kill us all right now. Desperation. Ugh, just a maybe horrible depression, thing to think about. Maybe drugs and alcohol. We don't know. We can't speculate. And again, uh, he's being charged, but we don't know if he really did it intentionally. But sad story there. Just... just Yo, what's up? Baby, let's Hey, tea sippers To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.